All right, folks, it's all good to have you here tonight. We're excited to get started. Um, we've got one question already. All right, hello, Caden. If you can hear me and you can see this robot, please raise your hand. If you can hear me, you can see this robot, please raise your hand. I've got about half of us raising our hand here. The hand is over in the right hand corner of the screen. It's going to be on the right hand side of your screen. Um, it's my way of knowing if I've got everybody or not. I usually don't go forward unless I've got about at least 80% of the people listening there and set. So, and if you can't, you can't raise your hand for some reason, your computer's doing something, i.e., you're using an iPad, just send us an email. Or a, te a question on the question seat. I already had one. Cain just said something to me. He's here, so we're good there. Okay. So, really excited to get started. Um, put everybody's hands down. How many people are at lab last night? Great. It looks like we've got most everybody here. We've got 10 to 16 so far. So raise your hand if you're at lab. Don't put your hands down. I'll put your hand down for you. Just leave your hand up. Raise your hand if you're at lab last night. Okay. All right, then. Um, we have about 11, about 70% of you. Um, did you get, were you able to finish your uh, catapults? Were you able to finish your, raise your hand if you finished your catapults. Very nice. Um, if you'll send me pictures of them, we'll post them. Happy to share with them. So good job. Really well done. Um, I think we all agree Mr. Maurer is a great teacher. I met him at a Lego conference. I, him and I are, have been involved, heavily involved with Lego Robotics, as you know. And so my name is Mr. Dubek. I've been teaching engineering since 1989. So it feels like it's been a very long time. And I teach at a school in Charlotte, North Carolina. I teach uh, middle school. I've primarily been a middle school teacher for years and years, but I've also been teaching high school kids, too. I'm very fortunate I get to teach across the ages. We're a prep school from K through 12th grade of about 1,400 kids. So we've got a little more than 100 kids a class level. Okay? Now, let me put it to you this way. Do you like taking things apart? Things apart. Would you, have find, would you find building a game more fun than playing the game? Are you curious how to solder, use epoxy, repair a tent with needle and thread? Do you enjoy math or science? Do you read science fiction or fantasy? Welcome. You're among friends. All right? So, just want to let you know, this is, well, I think you're really going to enjoy it. I think you'll enjoy doing the labs. I know you go to the same school, kids across schools. I think one of the best things you're going to do is doing the labs, doing some of these webinars. You're going to get the most out of this class. You try to attend the webinars. Right now I'm recording this webinar. We'll repost them in case you miss. We're going to go through on how you might find them off of YouTube and Emoto and different things. So we're going to work our way slowly through this, okay? Now, what this is going to be like for you if you've never done these webinars. We're going to learn by doing. So tonight's going to be kind of the exception. Tonight's a lot of me lecturing, unfortunately, just because we've got to get a lot, a lot of information out. But just as you started building those siege weapons, we'll have one night where you're going to have a picture of one, and we're going to go ahead and build it together. All right? We're going to do programming together, where I'm going to show you something, then you're going to program it, and then you're going to show it to me. We will um, do 3D printing, and some of your prints I'll actually print here in Charlotte. So I'm very, very excited to do that. And we're going to, we'll get into the details of those things, okay? I right, Hope's got a question. I'm going to go ahead and answer that. Yes, Hope. Hope, do you got a question? 
Well, Hope is not. She hands up. I'm going to put her hand down. Hopefully, that'll be what's going on there. All right. You will work with your head and your hands. We're going to try to make one thing that Dr. Mr. Mauer and I really super agree on. And that we want you folks to learn how to create technology, not just consume it. You're going to meet one hour labs, meet twice a week online. So Monday and Wednesdays, we're just going to meet once this week. We'll start next week. And I know we got to break up the labs. We're trying to figure out the best way to do that. We'll meet at a lab location every other, every two weeks or so. Again, Mr. Mauer's got robotics and basketball, and he's just doing everything at once. So yeah, I know your schedules are a little bit different, but through most of the semester, this is how it's going to be. No homework. All right. No tests. That's always good, right, to hear. A digital portfolio, yes. And we'll get into that probably Monday if we can start now, but we'll start getting to a digital portfolio. All right. Any questions so far about what we're doing? Raise your hand if you have a question, too. You can write it or you can raise your hand. I can call on you. Let me see if down here. Um, Hope Bauer said no. So, okay, maybe she didn't have a question. I made a mistake. Okay, we've got two people up here with questions. Let me go find out. I'm going to put, I'm going to put their hand. Let me see if he's got a question. Do you have a question, Caden? Okay, do you have a question? Hey, Caden. All right, buddy, I can't tell. I'm going to mute you back off. I'm going to mute you. I'm going to turn you and Hope back off. If you've got another question, raise again. All right, he's got no questions. All right, raise your hand if you've got another question. I, is there anything we might not get to doing? I'm not sure what that means. Let me ask John. Yes, John, what's your question, buddy? Well... Well, we're gonna get all. We're gonna get to try a bunch of neat stuff. We uh, this is a one, you know, a class that only meets for a semester, so we can't go to everything we would like. But we're. We, I'll give you a breakout of kind of how the weekends are gonna go. Okay. So let me go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and start down here. So here's what we'll be doing. We're going to create and update our own digital portfolios. So that way, uh, you may be doing that at your school, maybe not. You will need to use a Gmail account that isn't your school Gmail account. You're not Your Gmail account won't work with us on this. We're going to do Google Sites. We want you to upload what you make. This is a really good habit. It's good for colleges when you apply for college. Believe it or not, you need to start, start thinking about that now. And... Um, but I think more importantly, you get to see that when you start to make something, in your mind it'll start as one thing, and then as you keep working on it and building, it'll change over time. It's really cool to see that evolution. It's also a great way to keep records like a diary of, okay, where am I struggling on this? How did I fix it? And then later in life, you can go back and look at your things. Okay? So I, I that's a really important thing we're going to get going on. Ancient engineering, we've got siege weapons. We're going to be doing that. You can see a gallery and towers where they used to take people's, uh, people's arrows would run in there and attack the castle. And there's ballistas and uh, onagers, which is, uh, has to do with donkeys. And um, So you're going to get a chance to make those. You've already started making one. We're going to make use many weapons of mass, mass destruction. Make sure you wear your safety goggles. All right, we'll do a little bit of ancient architecture. And then ancient technologies, just the different things they were experimenting as in the steam engine. All right. So that'll be one thing, a group of things we'll be doing. And we're going to spend probably two week, two labs doing 
building medieval weapons, uh, siege weapons and things like that. Um, then the next couple weeks will be 3D printing. And at this, I know you have some 3D printers there, and we have five at this location. I'll probably have seven by the time we get started on this. So that really gives us the ability to print. What we need to, to learn is software to help us design things with 3D print. We're going to use the latest version of SketchUp. And then we're going to use Tinkercad, which has really gotten much more powerful over time now. I was a very early adopter of Tinkercad. And honestly, the first few times you used to use it, it was kind of almost toyish. There were certain things you just couldn't do with it very well. Certain things were great, but certain things, now they've addressed a lot of those. So you really can use it. We use it this time to really make things. Because now with the dimensions, you can set dimensions and get the printouts. Another program, which we may or may not get to, this would be one of those things where, hey, we got to just see how fast people are going, is called OpenSCAD, and it uses math to design your things for uh, 3D printers. And it's a little bit of programming. So it's pretty neat. Okay. Any questions about the ancient engineering or the 3D printing? All right, no questions. Awkward group. All right. Folks, too, I will be getting people hitting us um, throughout this tonight. This might be some interruptions. This is our first webinars for the semester, so we tend to get people calling with questions by doing other, undergoing other webinars. I apologize for that happens tonight in advance. All right. Materials engineering, nanotechnology. You're going to make, this is actually a little video, if I can get it to run. Watch. See the little hands? So you're going to get to do a little bit of soldering. I'll show you one more time. You're going to get to do a little bit of soldering, and you're going to get to build that. And you'll get to, like the other stuff we're giving you, you get to take it home. All right. This is solar-powered equipment. Here's glass these little metal glass, uh, that's a solar for concentrating all the sunlight. I can't think of it right now. We'll do some expo solar experiment with that. It depends how long it takes us to do the 3D hands. Uh, doing these hands here takes a little bit, getting your soldering skills up. All right? But it's definitely doable. You just have to take your time. All right? And then the last thing we'll do is aerospace. How many people play Kerbal Space Program? We got anybody who plays Kerbal Space Program? Raise your hand if you do. I'm surprised we have more people. Leave it up. Leave them up. We only have one. Wow. I think you'll really enjoy it. Cole. Hey, Cole. You like playing Kerbal? Okay, do you have the uh, full-blown version or just the demo mode? Yep, demo, you can do a lot with it. Thank you. So we're going to show you how to do that. It's a great way to learn what's called overall mechanics, the physics of what's involved in really putting someone in space and bringing them back. It's not trivial, but they do it in a really funny, fun way, and it's very, very interesting. All right? Okay, then we're going to learn a little bit of you can't be an engineer without knowing some programming. And you may find with the robots, you like the programming side more than the building side anyways. So this is a great way. We are going to be stressing programming. This will help you in robotics because you're using that same part of the brain. But um, we'll be using Java. And then, so that's kind of what we'll do with this class is we'll use Java. Let me get you going there. The Unity game engine is very unlikely, but that's... If we would have time, we could show you that. Unity Game Engine is used to make a lot of the really famous games you know. Okay. Now, I just want to practice, having spent this time here, 
I would like to spend a little bit of time just making sure you know how to use the software and how to uh, get along, get around on things here, okay? And I'm going to make sure if we got everybody signed up at Emoto, and we're just going to take our time and do some housekeeping right now, okay? So, can you raise your vertical hand, please? Everybody should look. I've got 14 and 19 people, so send me an email if you physically can. I got 15 and 19, 16 and 19. 17 and 19, great. Let me see here. All right. Kaylin, if you can, raise it there. And Kaden, if you can. I'm not sure why you guys can't. All right, there you go. Kaden, leave your hands up. Don't take them down. Kaden, leave it up, buddy. I will not, I will put your hands down for you. If you leave it up, that way I know. And then Kalen, there's a Kalen with a K-A-L-E-N, if you'll put it up. All right, great. That's what we do. We leave our hands up. It's a way for me to know, hey, we've got it right. We don't. Sometimes I'll even call it and obviously speak to you as I was doing now a few minutes ago. All right. All right. Have you registered registered for all the webinars? In other words, you're all set. We meet at this time. There'll be labs. There'll be different. We're gonna. There'll be another set of webinars possibly offered. So we'll get you squared away there. Let me see what Philip's gonna ask. I'm not asking you to raise your hand, so you don't have to raise it yet. I'm just letting you know there'll be. I should have told you that. I'm sorry. Um, if you need to be registered for all the webinars. Uh, don't worry about that. That would not be, I'm showing you a little bit of another webinar. All right, let's get you on Edmodo and make sure, let me go over here to information. I'm going to bring this up. Bear with me one second. Here's what I want you to see. I'll put this out here right now for you to see it. Let me go back to the... All right, here's what you're gonna see. Make this bigger and then I'm gonna take it off so it doesn't confuse another class. But, there it is. I'm gonna send you the code right here as well. Go to edmodo.com and register. What Edmodo does is where we're going to post where there's homework. Not, we didn't say it'd be homework, but hey, remember there's lab tonight. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. No, there isn't lab tonight because the weather's really bad, so we're not going to have lab. It's a way of getting everything out. So raise your hand if you've gotten, this is a new code. We don't use the old code. Anton, you got to use the new code. I don't put anything in the old last semester. So, what I want you to do is raise your hand once you told me, yeah, I'm on Edmodo now. Um, if you have. If you don't, I want you to go to edmodo.com and go ahead and register. Take your time, no rush. Then have your parents get on it later and they register as parents using this same code. All right? So we want you to be on Edmodo. So raise your hand once they once you're on got a Edmodo done. This will take a few minutes as we get everybody set to go. 
because without this, you're, we're not going to know if you, if, for example, that, hey, you got the information. And nothing's worse if, for example, if Mr. Maurer call, cancels the class, you don't know it, and you show up there, and there's no one there. So I just got, for example, we just have a new member. Luke just signed in. So I'm getting confirmations on this. So I got most everybody here. Sorry, folks, this is going to come through. Let me go ahead and see if I get out of this. The problem we got. All right. Sorry, that will may ring through as people are trying to figure out how to log in. They're calling a we're using Google Voice. So just so you understand technology, well, I'm on a Google Documents presenting, so that's why it's ringing through. Okay, Philip Germain, are we getting logged in to Edmodo? Kaylin, are we getting done there as well? Anton, you need to be on Edmodo with the new code. You can't use the old code. It's good to have you guys back. All right, here we got some people in. I'm on Edmodo. Good job, Jason. Uh, do we have to get them right now? Yes, Jaden, right now. That's why I'm waiting here, so you do it. See, in the past, we would say to people, go ahead, let's, you know, let's go ahead and uh, do it, and then we would get into trouble. They wouldn't do it. They wouldn't, they'd keep saying, yeah, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, and they'd forget to do it, and then we'd send out a letter or something that everybody needed, and they wouldn't know it. So, for example, say you're going in a class and we say, hey, make sure to remember to remember some milk caps so you can use them with your uh, uh, amazing um, many weapons of mass destruction books. And we're, gonna, we're giving you all these materials to put it on. Well, we want you to do that, okay? So I'm still waiting on some folk, fine folks here. Okay, Cole, are we on it? Philip, are we on it? Kalen, are we on it? Cole, are we on it? Philip, let's get you guys on it. Then we can go. All right. All right, wait a minute. I'm on. Now Philip says yes. Well, Philip is. Jim, I'm on now. Make sure you raise your hands, guys. That's all important. I do not understand, Michael. What's the Cole? All right. When you go on Edmodo, they're going to ask for a code when you log in. That code is a code that's associated with the with our class. And that's where we post everything. Michael, got a question, buddy? Hey, Michael. Okay, we'll go back in, log out, and try to get the code back in there, okay? Okay, we'll wait for you a little bit longer here. Luke, I know you're in here because I saw it. I got in your response. Okay, what's the code? Code, uh, it's right here. It's I sent it out to you earlier, but I'll send it to you one more time, Cole. We have most almost everybody here. Can I just bear with us a little bit longer, guys and gals?
So how are we going to get materials? Someone just asked a question. Um, how are we going to get materials? Probably build siege weapons. Uh, Mr. Maurer will be getting those. And when you have your next lab, we'll go ahead and uh, get them sent to you that way. All right. Okay, make sure your hands up if you're on there. It feels I feel like we're going down in the number of people that have wrote on Edmodo. Okay, the code again is I'll put it in here for you. I'm sending it to you all under the whole audience. There it is. Let's get you enrolled. Nico, are you enrolled? And again, encourage your parents to sign in. They use your code, this code as well. They log in as a parent. Okay, I've got Jaden. All right, who else is left to tell me? I don't see the code, Jaden. We're putting the code in the chat window to everybody. I'm sending it all. Look down there. Did you find it yet? All right, Michael's got his. Michael, raise your hand, please. Uh, is it Iowa M Middle School Spring 2015? Yes. Jaden, have you been able to find the code? Okay, look over to your screen. Do you see where it says go to webinar panel? So where are you clicking? Can you raise your hand? Okay. See if it's right down there, buddy. It should be somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and mute you there, Jane, but if mom will make sure to help, why don't we, uh, we'll come back, I'll stay on a little bit longer afterwards if you still have not found the Edmodo, and we can get on. And I'll tell you what, I can do it, I'm going to put it on the big screen here, Jane, do you see the big screen? You've got the screen here, I'm going to go ahead and drop it right here for you. There it is, A-H-I-H-C-3, A-H-I-H-C-3. Okay, bud? All right. All right. We're going to go ahead and go on. I put the code up there for you, Jaden. Write it in. Try that. If you still don't have it in, let us know after this, please. Okay, next thing we have to look at registering. 
Um, you're going to need to create a Gmail account so we can create your digital portfolios. We can decide with yours if you want to use your talk with Mr. Maurer about using your school account for this if you want since many of you are at the school he teaches. And if that's fine with him, that's fine with us. The main thing is we want you to document your work. Here's another really important point, folks. I'm putting everybody's hands down now. Hang on here a second. And I appreciate everybody's patience who already had their moto code as we're trying to get this through. What's really important to understand is not just documenting the final product. We want you to document the process. We want you to take comments. Many of you hopefully will go on to careers in STEM and engineering and technology. As you work on projects, documentation is really important. It doesn't sound like the most, oh, favorite thing to do, but it really, if you'll keep it, it will really help you develop better projects. You'll start to appreciate, for example, that um, when you're working on a project and it's not going great, you can look at all the previous projects and go, oh, yeah, I remember when it was like that. Also, I'm right now doing molding and casting. That's the one thing we're going we're gonna to talk. We talked a little bit about what we're going to be doing. Um, molding and casting is one of the coolest things we can do with the 3D printer. And what it allows us to do, for example, is with you when you're working with the 3D printer, is it allows us to take one item and make many, many copies of that item. And so I've not only got pictures, and I'll post those later, of my, you know, finished one that looks decent, but all the ones that didn't work out. I'm still in trying to improve on it. And I made notes to myself of what worked and what didn't. And then when I go to ask people for help, I, I can show them what I've done, and it's, it's really a great way to go. So we really want you to be able to do that. So let's just assume, let me ask you this. For all the people that are in Mr. Maurer's school, do you folks, raise your hand, do you all use Gmail and uh, say Google Documents, mainly Google Documents at your school? All right, great. At this point, let me uh, put your hands down now. Do you do digital portfolios at your school? Great then it makes a lot of sense to me to go ahead and use the same digital portfolios. All right? If your school doesn't have a problem with that. We'll check with Mr. Maurer. Hopefully he's not. This is something really important. You can show your high school. If you're, if you're applying to get on a robotics team, you can show them all these extra skills you know how to do. Soldering is a very cool skill to have knocked down. Um, so being able to use a 3D printer to make parts, another really good skill. Next thing. Sometimes we will not be here for the webinars. All right. We are going to have a YouTube channel. All right. We're going to have a YouTube channel. And with this YouTube channel, there's the little guy there. You'll know it's the right one. If there's one that just says Young Engineers Tonight in blue, it's not the same one. Um, good old Google drives me crazy with this. I set it up first under my name, thinking it was under Young Engineers Today, but it wasn't, and it's so we had to set up another business page. So we used this green robotic cab we drew just so we know the difference. But there it is, YouTube. All right, um, and so that's where you want to go, and that's where you want to subscribe to it. So that way, you know, if we post videos that you need to see, you can. But if you miss and you just want to get on YouTube, go to Young Engineers Today, you'll see these two young ladies on it. Green Robotic Head, you'll know those where the webinars are. All right? And we will go ahead and set up a, uh, a um, playlist for Iowa. Hey, uh, Ryan asks, can I use an existing account, not a school account? As long as it's okay with your parents, they know it. That's okay with me. All right? All right? So... Now I'm going to ask for one more thing to kind of go through here. And I know it's 707. That's why I know this first night's tedious. Don't base this class on tonight. We're not, this is like that first day of school all our teachers read you. Know, hey, you got to do this homework. Yeah, you got to get this note signed. We got a little bit of that tonight, and I apologize. But it's something we got to get through. 
if you would, I'm going to highlight this. We want you to just take a very brief survey. This isn't meant to be, you don't put your name on anywhere. It's to give us a sense of your STEM. What are you interested in STEM education? It's only seven questions long. It's not long at all. It's just meant to see. So we go back, we're going to ask the same questions at the end of this class in May and see if it made any difference to you. And you can put down comments on there of the things you would like to do or you saw or suggestions. I'm going to go ahead. I'm sending it to everybody here as well. And it's on the screen. So, But I just sent it so you don't necessarily have to type it. So I just sent this comment to everybody. Raise your hand once you fill out that form. Again, it's 7-8. We'll get back to that in a little bit. So once you get the survey done, come back in and raise your hand so that way we know. The survey is just to help us get a sense. And we don't, again, most nights, when we're, talking, when we're doing Tinkercad, you're going to have a Tinkercad screen up and we're going to work through it together. You're going to get to do things. It will not be, this is death by PowerPoint. Great, I've got a bunch of uh, people just registered on Enmono. Excellent, excellent. Please go ahead, get to that. Let me see if you've got any questions down here. Oh, I had a question here. I don't know what it is. All right, Anton, go ahead. You can watch the last part on YouTube channel. And I got. I have to go watch it. What is your opinion? What is the opinion? I'm at the end of the survey. You can just put down a comment, say not applicable, and just submit it. If you have a Gmail, how would you make a digital? Let me see what you're trying to say there, John. Let me find out what you're trying to ask there, buddy. All right, just hang in here, guys. I know it's a lot. John, what's your question? Hey. We're going to make, you're going to need your Gmail account to make what's called a, a Google site. We'll be very specific on the kinds of pictures we put up there. Mainly, we're only putting stuff up that we make. So this is not like a place you upload pictures of your friends like in Facebook. But it is a place where you say, hey, look at this. I printed this on a 3D printer. 
uh, maybe a picture of how you did it, maybe a picture of uh, this next design of it and how you think you can improve it. All right. We've got almost everybody there. Let's try to get this next few moments, guys. All right, Ethan and Jason, I hope you guys are getting it down there. I can't figure out how to get to the survey. You take that bit of code, that HTTP code, and you drop it in the top menu bar like your browser window. And then that will take you to the survey. Good, someone found it. Great. All right, let's go on here. We've only got a few more minutes of this. Sorry again, it's New Year's. Um, on this class, this uh, guy in the right, white hair is me, okay? And if you look over there, uh, these are some of my students. This is the guy with the black hair is me too, about 30 years ago. Um, this is my students and I made, said, uh, they made the world's largest paper airplane at the time. And there's another project I'm working on. Um, what kind of aptitudes for this stuff? It's good if you like math, but you don't have to be a math genius. That's one thing I want to talk to you. And say you really like inventing things, but math, you struggle a little bit. Think about being an engineering technician or a programmer that way. All right? Science is helpful. Not an absolute requirement. Problem solving is important, but we're going to teach you how to do that. That's why learning to be an engineer, I'm going to put everybody's hands down. No matter if you do it for a living or not, it trains you how to approach a problem and solve it. Sorry, let me go over here. Perseverance. It helps with that. To be honest with you, um, we use a... There have been times that some of the 3D printing stuff, I wanted to pull my hair out. You stay with it, and then you get better and better with it. Being a team player is important. Getting along with people does matter, folks. And being able to communicate. So I have sometimes a lot of engineering students say, I don't like English. I don't want to study that. You still got to be able to communicate. And yes, you do need that. All right. What is engineering? It's the practical application of science and math. as in the design and construction of machines, vehicles, structures, roads, and systems. It's something to think about. Half the jobs created today are results of technology. However, many jobs are being lost to technology. I'll give you an example of this. Um, if you look at people with medium skills, they were losing their jobs. Low skills have been keeping their jobs gone up slightly. High skills have gone up. Those particularly women in the high skill area have really done a lot more. So ladies, there's lots of opportunities for you. Um, but the medium skills, what's happening is those are these low skill jobs aren't going to wait because the low ages are slow. It doesn't really make sense to make a robot to replace that person. Medium skill it does, and it's just very hard to make a robot to replace high skilled people yet. Anyways, though, people like pharmacists are under kind of a there's a concern about automation for that and the jobs for them. What has happened, and you can ask your grandparents about this, and parents, it used to be 30 people would work on a line to make something. Those jobs went to China. They're coming back, but instead of 30 people making something, they used two. So it's a very interesting time 
um, for studying engineering and opportunities. And again, I know you're middle school and you're really not, but you're starting to think about what you might like to do. A little bit of trivia. Those are the top paying salaries. And they're almost all engineering and uh, computer science is right up there too. All right, let's talk about the difference between the scientific method and the engineering method, okay? Scientific method, you have observation, you have hypothesis, you have an experiment, you analyze data, you get a conclusion. Then you have a peer review. All right? What... What we're doing here, basically, is you're observing the world around you. You're trying to get a good sense of what really is happening. Okay? So if we can measure things, we, we come up with an idea, we measure it, we test it. Peer review means we have other people look at our experiment and say, yeah, that looks great, or no, that's terrible. And that's really important. That's one thing that's really neat about science, is that when you do an experiment, we're not going to accept your experiment unless someone else can repeat it. All right. Now, engineering is scientists investigate that which already is. Engineers create that which have never been. That was by Albert Einstein, which is kind of cool to think about it. Science is trying very hard to display in our reality. Engineers are creating different new things. We want to you to learn the engineering method. I'm less interested that you know this particular step. We want you to get a sense of what the engineering method is as opposed to the scientific method, all right? And so in this case, you have research plan, prototype, commercialize. Where you have peer review in science and engineering, we tend to let we stay in house, keep improving it, and then we let the marketplace tell us if it's any good. When they're doing research, one thing that's really a skill you need to be able to start to pick up is how to use math like a tool to see if it's even doable, what you think you're going to do. Let me give you a perfect example. It was just, you know, holidays the other day. Two people are selling trees. They cut the trees down. They buy the trees from the farm tree farmer for $25. And they go back in the town, and they can sell them for $20. Well, I hope you see the problem there. They're paying 25 and they're selling them for 20 You know, they're not using math to figure out, hey, we're losing $5 we get every tree. As opposed to, hey, let's buy a bigger truck, we'll get more trees. And I'm just making them lose even more money. Now, that's the most obvious use of math, but you can really get much more into it. We're also going to use the science to make sure we're not trying to break one of the laws of physics. All right. And then we have mar marketplace. That's also important. Okay, the marketplace where people shop, world of public opinion. We then plan on it, we identify the problem, we brainstorm our solutions, we select what we think is the best idea, we model it, that's why we're going to simulate things here. Modern engineering, you simulate almost everything and you do lots and lots of examples before you build. And then you do a proof of concept. It doesn't, for, so for example, you figure out Wow, if I can um, get an airplane that can get 5% more fuel efficiency than all the other airplanes, there'll be a big market for that because that's the big expense with airplanes. So with that in mind, um, you come up with a way to put a, a, a chemical treatment over a windshield of your airplane, which improves the you think it's going to improve the efficiency of the air moving through the glass, and therefore you'll get better gas mileage. You don't build the whole airplane. You just take a piece of glass, paint it with your new material, put an air blower on it, and go, okay, did that improve it or not? You know, you measure, you put a load meter, you can measure the loads on that piece of glass. So don't be, the point is not about airplanes. It's about the idea that you proof of concept, you just make some part of it to show that people it works. All right? doesn't have to be pretty. doesn't have to be you know, highly functional at that moment. You just got to show that your idea 
fundamentally it's going to work. Here's what's really different probably to an engineer here when the prototype phase. You build it, you test it, you repeat. Build, test, analyze, repeat. Do it a bunch more. Well, I'm like, all right. This iterative process. This is why we want you to take pictures. As you build stuff, you're going to build it, try it. Oh, I can make it a little bit better. Build it, try it better, better. We're going to keep trying it over and over again. Wait till you're building your siege weapons. All right, production or your 3D prints, for that matter, all the different things. Final thing in the engineering method, we're really worried about how we're going to manufacture it. Because, again, it could be a great idea, but if it just sits there, we can't do it. You've all heard about carbon nanotubes and all this stuff. Part of the problem is they haven't found out good ways to manufacture this stuff. So that might be your job someday. You may be the one that figures this out. Okay. Um, let's go ahead real quick. There's all types of engineering. There's chemical, civil, electrical, engineering management, engineering science, geotechnical, mechanical. They're all there. If you use a product right now, some engineer was involved in the design or manufacturing of that product. Bar none. Okay? So if you take mechanical, you can actually break, and then you can break them all down in subsets. Mechanical includes aerospace, automotive, biomedical, mechanical, naval. Who knew they still do naval engineering, but they do. Um, there's a bunch more links. We have 724. I'm going to ask a poll question. I'm not going to have you go through um, every poll there is. But you're going to see that there's tremendous demand for people that, like your, that have the skills. And also have, actually, can write well and communicate well. So it's not an all or none, none sum game. If you like being in the theater and this stuff, great. Do them both. All right? It'll help you. Okay? So we're going to talk more and more about it. It's like history. There's nothing. History is great. I find it fascinating. But we don't always get to do history because um, there's lots and lots of people that want to do history and not a lot of demand for jobs for it. Okay? Whereas engineering... A lot, of, a lot of people going into it, and there are lots of jobs. Isn't, isn't, isn't aerospace engineering? Let me go ahead. Let me move my mouse up here. And then, hang on, everybody. We'll only be another couple more minutes here. Isn't aerospace engineering when people design rockets? You bet. Rockets and airplanes. Yep. Mainly think rockets. All right. Now. I want to just do a poll so you can get used to what's a poll is going. I'm going to create, let me see. I'm going to create a poll real quick. I thought we had one here, but let's go ahead and pull it up. You're going to vote on these. So I just let me put this up here. We just got kind of, all right, come on. It's been going very show. So what you'll see is I'll put one up here in one second. Um, do you want to be an engineer? I'll say it. Do you want to be an engineer? You can all vote on this. And there's no wrong answer here. All right. Last thing here, folks, let's put this up. Wasn't sure how far we get today, so let's go to this point right here. Save. Okay, so I do not want that in here. Let's go here, select the poll. We're going to launch it, launch the poll. So go ahead, folks. Select if you want. I've got 37, 40% voted. I'd like to get 80, 40 before I end it. Wonderful. Nice. We got 89% voted. Unsure. That's totally understandable at your age. All right. I'm going to go ahead. We got nine, almost 9% voted. I'm going to close the poll. I always share the results. So there it is. All right. All right, folks. That's where we're going to go ahead and stop it at this, at this point.
I think we're going to go ahead and stop it. I would just point out to you a couple last things about communication. This is our part, engineering your future. This is what the user asked for. We thought rope, swing, with the trig, swing on. This is how the analyst looked at it. This is how the system was designed. This is the programmer wrote the code, kind of like this way. This is what the user really wanted. This is how it actually works. So that communication is really important in all this. Okay? I have no idea whose that is, but it is a man. All right. Let me go ahead. I'm going to close the poll, hide the results. All right. Let me show you this again. It was what the user asked for. It's how the analyst saw it. It's how the system was designed. As the programmer wrote it, kind of this weird tree over there. Here's what the user really wanted. There it is. Am I still on the poll? No, I think I'm, we're off. Hopefully it's hot heading off there. Not surprisingly, if you graduate with engineering degree, the communication teamwork skills are best. Some people are saying, let me show, see if this will show it. All right. Can you see it now? Sometimes this web software is not, got a couple glitches. Can you see it now, guys? Raise your hand if you can see the trees. Okay, good. And this was the joke of it is this is what the user wanted, but this is what we ended up engineering because it's so hard to communicate and really understand each other. All right. And so if you go and if you graduated or you have the education they're looking for, notice GPA is lower down here. They want to know, can you communicate teamwork and you have good personal skills? Finally, a strong work ethic. All right. All right, folks, 7.29, try to end always before 7.30 for you guys, because I know you've got a lot going on. Well, it's 6.30 at your end, sorry. Um, have a great day. Monday, we'll start hitting it, um, digital portfolio, and then we're going to start looking at ancient engineering, and you're going to get start building stuff. All right? Y'all take care. Bye-bye.